Today we will practice solving proportions, so let's get started. A proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equal to each other. So in the equation below, we have x over 16 is equal to 3 fourths. For example, if we had the ratio 3 out of 4 dentists prefer toothpaste A, well, if we have 16 total dentists, how many of them prefer that toothpaste? So that's the type of equation we are solving here. Now this and all proportion equations can be solved using the techniques we have already discussed. In fact, the equation below is a one-step equation. However, as we will see next, there is also a property we can use to help solve proportions. But first, let's solve this problem as a one-step equation. Just a reminder, when we solve equations, our goal is to get the unknown variable, in this case x, all by itself on one side with a coefficient of 1, and we don't need to show that coefficient, and everything else will be on the other side of the equation. And this will give us the value for x that when we substitute it back into the original equation gives us a true statement. So here x is divided by 16. To undo that division, or to convert 1 16 into 1, we're going to multiply by 16. So now we have 16 times 1 over 16. So these will cancel out, leaving us with x. But what is done to one side, we have to do to the other side in order to keep the equation balanced. Now we have 3 fourths times 16. We can simplify this down because 4 goes into 16 four times. That leaves us with 3 times 4, which is 12. So 12 is the solution to this problem. Let's check our answer. Wherever there's an x, we're going to plug in the value of 12. So we have 12 over 16 equal to 3 over 4. So let's simplify down this left side. So we can rewrite 12 as 3 times 4. We can rewrite 16 as 4 times 4. These 4s are going to cancel here. This should be equal to 3 fourths. So I'm not doing anything to the right side. And that leaves the left side as 3 fourths equal to 3 fourths. And that's a true statement. Again, that's one way of solving proportion problems, which is just using those same techniques we've been using throughout this unit. But let's look at another way. And this is using the cross product property. If A over B is equal to C over D, and B is not equal to zero, and D is not equal to zero, so with these two, we're saying neither of the denominators are zero. We cannot have zero in the denominator. Thou shall not divide by zero. If this is the case, then AD is equal to BC. What we end up doing is we're multiplying across this equal sign. We're taking the numerator of one and multiplying it by the denominator of the other. And this gives us a times d, or ad. And that is equal to the numerator of the opposite side times the denominator. So in this case, b times c. So let's try that for the previous problem. So we have still have x over 16 equal to 3 fourths. So we're going to multiply these two terms here. And that is 4x. And that's equal to, and then we'll multiply these two terms. Using that cross product property. And then 16 times 3 is 48. 
Still have a one step problem here. We're going to divide both sides by 4. And we get x equal to 12. And this is the same problem that was on the previous slide. And the answer is x equal to 12. So let's try a few more. And once again, we're going to use this cross product property to multiply across the proportion to help solve this problem. So we're going to end up with 4x equal to, and then 8 times 3. And 8 times 3 is 24. We have a one-step equation. We'll solve this by dividing by 4. We're isolating that unknown variable x. We end up with x equal to 6. When we check our answer, we have 4 over 3 equal to 8 over 6. Now we have to simplify down these fractions. So the left side is simplified down all the way. We cannot simplify this further. We can rewrite 8 as 2 times 4. We can rewrite 6 as 2 times 3. These 2's will cancel out, and we end up with 4 thirds equal to 4 thirds. So the solution to this equation, to this proportion, is x equal to 6. This second problem looks a little more complicated, but we're going to still solve it in the same manner. We're going to multiply this numerator by the opposite denominator. So we'll have 9 times y minus 3, and that's equal to, and once again we'll multiply across the proportion like this, we end up with 24. Next, we use the distributive property. We have 9y minus 27 equal to 24. This is a two-step problem. We're going to add 27 to both sides. And we get 9y equal to 51. And then we'll divide both sides by 9. We end up with y equal to 51 over 9. We can simplify this down. 51 is 17 times 3. And 9 is 3 times 3. So a set of 3's will cancel out. We end up with y equal to 17 over 3. Which is equal to 5 and 2 thirds. Now, when I check my answer, I'm going to go back to this improper fraction. But let's check this answer. So we have 17 over 3 minus, and I'm going to go ahead and do 9 over 3 for 3, all over 3. And that's equal to 8 ninths. 17 minus 9, that's going to give us 8 over 3 all over 3. That's equal to 8 over 9. Now when we divide by 3, this is the same thing as multiplying by 1 third. So in reality, we have 8 thirds times 1 third. And that's equal to 8 ninths. And when we complete this multiplication, we have 8 ninths equal to 8 ninths. That's a true statement. So 17 thirds, or 5 and 2 thirds, is the solution to this equation. Two more. So first we're going to do x times 9. So we have 9x, and that's equal to, then 4 times the quantity x minus 10. So 4 times x minus 10. We'll simplify that right side using the distributive property. So we get 4x minus 40. And then subtract 4x. We'll gather our x terms on the left side of the equation. So we have 5x equal to negative 40. 
divide both sides by 5. To isolate our unknown variable x, we have x equal to negative 8. Checking the answer, we have negative 8 all over negative 8 minus 10 is equal to 4 ninths. We have negative 8 all over negative 18 is equal to 4 ninths. We can rewrite the numerator as negative 2 times 4. We can rewrite the denominator as negative 2 times 9. That's all equal to 4 ninths. These negative 2's will cancel out. We end up with 4 ninths equal to 4 ninths. So our solution is x equal to negative 8. And finally, we have 8 times y minus 9. And that's equal to 5 times the quantity y plus 5. We'll simplify each side. So we have 8y minus 72 is equal to 5y plus 25. We'll gather the unknown variable y on the left side. So I'll subtract 5y from both sides. This leaves us with 3y minus 72 equal to 25. We'll add 72 to both sides, and we have 3y equal to 97. And then dividing by 3, we get y equal to 97 thirds, which is also 32 and 1 thirds. Now let's check that answer. So we have 8 all over. So our y value is 32 and 1 3rd. I'm going to go ahead and use that improper fraction again. So we have 97 3rd plus and then 5 with a denominator of 3 would be 15 thirds. And that's equal to 5 all over. Again, we have 97 thirds minus 27 thirds. We'll do the arithmetic in the denominator first. 97 plus 15 is 112. So we have 112 all over 3 equal to 5 all over. This is 70 all over 3. So this can be rewritten as 8 times 3 all over 112. And that's equal to 5 times 3 all over 70. You notice I left these as factors instead of multiplying them out. So let's start factoring these denominators. So I'll bring down this 8 times 3, and we can factor 112 as 2 times 7 times 8. And then on this right side, so 5 goes into 70 14 times, we can rewrite 14 as 2 times 7. So now we have 2 times 7 times 5 instead of 70, and then 5 times 3 in the numerator. So this 8 cancels out. That leaves us with 3 over 14. And these 5's cancel out, leaving us with 3 over 14. That's a true statement. So this here is the solution to our equation. A great way to learn is to practice on your own. We will discuss in a bit, but go ahead and pause your screen and do these four problems. Using that cross product property, we're going to multiply 2 times 20 and set it equal to 5 times a. We end up with a one-step equation, 40 equal to 5a, and an answer of a equal to 8.
Still using that cross product property, we're going to multiply that numerator, b minus 1 times 6, and set it equal to 12 times 1. We end up with the equation 6b minus 6 equal to 12, and then solving this two-step equation, we get b equal to 3. Continuing to use that cross product property, for the third problem, we end up with c equal to 6. And then finally, for the fourth problem, we get d equal to negative 20 over 3, which is the same as negative 6 and 2 thirds. Continue practicing solving equations, and I'll see you in the next video.